doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it, doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it. What's happening? We are here. We're gonna draw another comic illustration for the Rooney the Rabbit Patreon pals. Uh, today we're gonna draw a patient spider and a baby bat. Uh, ooh, I'm gonna close that window. We're gonna draw a patient spider and a baby bat. Let me get this open up here. Um, this is for Patreon pal Maya. Oh, it's also Bia, kind of. Well, oh, yeah, it's for Maya. It's for Maya. And uh, we are going to get started. This is a complex illustration. This is a complex one. So it's gonna be a little bit more involved. We're gonna make it happen. We're gonna make it happen in the next hour. Uh, uh, visit the chat if you have anything you wanna ask. I'll be checking that uh, periodically as it can. You just have to become a subscriber on YouTube to join the chat. That's it. It's easy. It's free. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and get started. Now, I wanted to look what particular kind of spider and uh, I went for this jumping spider and this is a this is a Creative Commons photo here, and then this bat, um, and it is uh, what kind of bat is this? This is a oh, oh I don't know what kind of bat it is. All right, I'm gonna have to determine the the bat later, but I will tell you that the it's a the spider is a Caldari fidipus. And it looks kind of like an old spider. Now specifically the request here is to draw a spider and a bat. Um, and the spider is going to be putting the bat to bed. And the spider is going to be doing so very patiently. Putting the bat to bed, a, 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 a reading, reading to the bat. So usually I do one character drawing, so we're going to do two here. We do have to have a bed, at least in here somewhere. Um, let me switch over here. Yeah, you can see that a little better. We do have to have a bed, especially for a background. This is, like I said, a little bit more complex of a drawing, but that's okay because this particular Patreon pal is at the hundred dollar level. And that means they get an illustration every month um, of the simpler kind, or for this more complex kind, they get one every two months. It's better out of here, just smaller at least. I'll look at him, but not right now. It's always amusing procreate. On my 2021 M1 iPad Pro 12.9 inch with, uh, I forget how much memory. Uh, alright, the bat's gonna be in here going crazy. So with the spider kind of calmly reading a book and uh, it's going to be like a tired spider too. And I'm going to have them read Runaway Bunny because that's my favorite bedtime story until the Rooney the Rabbit bedtime stories make their appearance on the And then that's that's coming on the horizon. So we'll have it be runaway bunny. Because it could be runaway batty. Why don't we do that? Runaway batty. Stupid wordplay is the key to a happy life. Don't you think? Um see a little bit better there. Yeah, a little bit, but I still think this looks clear here in the pencil stage. This guy, yeah, he's got a little divot at the top of his head. He's very cute. This looks like his mustache. 
Hope everyone's doing okay tonight. It's very rainy here, and there's a huge um, thunderstorm going on. So if the stream suddenly ends, it means I lost power. Because I don't have an uninterrupted power supply on this house. This is a very sweet scene of all these very creepy crawly creatures, so I like it. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. This is a great suggestion. Uh, what if the whole thing smaller so I can fit in this other leg? So I'm cramping up. You know, this is my favorite thing about digital drawing, is that if I had started to space out the sketch wrong incorrectly on Bristol board, on, on paper, that'd be it. That'd be all she wrote. <laughs> But here I can actually just, you know, quickly size it out to what I want and be okay. Um, it is a very horizontal drawing right now, which is, uh, oh, I should, I guess, mention in the chat that I am starting anything you like. We're in the chat. The chat's happening. Maybe what we can do is kind of show her room, and we're just, how about we show, my girls when they go to bed always want water, ice water, which we endearingly called icy water at some point when they were little, so that's the only thing they call it, but it's nice because they refer to it as like a treat, like can I have, can I have some icy water, like that that's a really great treat. So that's a sort of a great little parent Jedi mind trick that we've performed. They always have water. And the reason we wanted to limit it to water in, um, in bed is because kids spill everything. So I'm gonna put a spilled cup down here. Maybe a stuffy that's been torn apart. Something over here. This could be okay. So she'll be kind of holding her covers with her little bat feet, which is cute. Let's take a look. Let's look at this guy. He's interesting. They're so furry. I like his compound eyes. I like that all of them will be sleepy. I think we need like something else. One other thing. Turn off this spider. Uh, oh, okay. What else is going to be on a kid's floor? Who's going to. Oh. Put another book strewn over here. And that'll give them another opportunity for some. I should get a little. Can I put a clock up on the wall? Might be good to put a clock up to show that she's up way too late. Could be like a little bat clock. Not sold on the bat clock yet. That could be sold, but I'm not sure. Um, all right, we're gonna switch over to um, inking shortly, which would be a great time to pause and tell you why we're here today. And that's because of the Rooney, Rooney the Rabbit Patreon. Uh, you can get an illustration just like the one I'm drawing if you join the Rooney the Rabbit Patreon at any of the illustration commission levels. Uh, we have limited spots, but we do have some in there. Uh, illustration commission at the $10 level, you get one every year, a basic one. What we're doing now is a more complex one, uh, but a basic one could be a single character, um, you know, not much background, stuff like that. Get one of those every year, and if you pay annually, then you'll get it right away. You'll get that illustration right away. 
or you could go up uh, to the $20 level. That means you can get two of those basic illustrations a year, or you can get one of these more complex ones once a year. Then let's talk about the level that Maya's at. Maya is up at this $100 a month level. Can't do many of these, but I do have four spots here. Um, we'll start your drawing right away. You get a new one every month, or if you want a complex one like this one, you get one of these every two months. Um, with all these, um, if you pay annually, I'd start working on everything right away with the monthly illustration commissions. Um, I'd start working right away anyway. If you pay annually, we could do a, even a much bigger, more complex thing. Um, but you can go to the Rooney the Rapid Patreon right now at patreon.com slash portermason. The, the link's also down in the description of this, this here YouTube video as well. That's uh, patreon.com slash portermason to do that. All right, let's get back to this. We're going to move over to, in it, to inking, so let's add a layer. You know, I just heard recently about a strategy for making sure you never accidentally start drawing your inks on your penciling layer. And I tried something to do that in Patreon, and um, I, I didn't find it, I didn't find it really working. Um, it was uh, basically something that someone had used for, um, for Photoshop to do something similar, and uh, I found it did not work for Patreon, which is that you'd make the the uh, the pencil layer transparent. So that if you started drawing your inking layer, you were still in the pencil layer, you'd kind of notice that, like, hey, I'm still in a transparent layer. I must be drawing it in the wrong place. And I tried to do something similar in Patreon. And, um, sorry, not on Patreon, on Procreate. And I uh, was in, unable to do it. So if there are any artist pals out there who know a good way to. Make sure that you don't start drawing um, your inking layer on your penciling layer. I would appreciate that. You know, The Runaway Bunny is a board book. So I should account for that. It's more of a flat book. It doesn't have this curved spine like I was sketching here. As we discussed, the spider has hairs all over it, but have to figure out how to handle that later. That's gonna be too complicated. Like that. Let's just do. Yeah, that actually is what it looks like. I just kind of hint at the thick pages. And uh, we'll have to look up what Runaway Bunny looks like. As I look what you say, Runaway Batty. Into a little bad here. The spider did look awful furry, so I'm hitting at some of that here, and uh, it essentially comes all the way down. So I'll come through here. I was intending for some of that to be more hidden by the book, I guess, but it's not going to be. Um, hold on, I'm missing an arm here again. So happy that I'm drawing this digitally. So I'm missing an arm. That's okay. Because we can do an erase. You know how much white out hell I would be in if this was Bristol board. And yes, it's nice to draw on Bristol board and that still too. And I do enjoy doing that. And that's one of the things at the higher um, Patreon levels. I'll, I'll do a pen and ink drawing. Uh, Basically for the same rate as about uh, maybe like three or four the digital drawings. It's just so much more time consuming because uh, in case there are any mistakes and um, you know, you have to plan out everything a bit more. 
if I probably would end up doing in a lot of cases is still doing it digitally and planning that out and then and then moving over to uh, um, maybe use a light box or something to print it out and get it onto a Bristol board that way. So yes, come to think that that actually sounds like a pretty good idea. Maybe I could do it that way. Regardless, if you're interested in your commission being a on paper, then please uh, let me know when you sign up. Patreon.com slash Porter Mason. This, because it's a complex drawing, we're also not going to get super into the anatomy of, um, of everything. Sometimes I like to look at that a little more closely and uh, really get into the details here, but we got a lot going on in this drawing, and as such, we got to go heavy toward the more iconographic drawing, which means we have to hint at stuff and not do as much detail. Fewer lines, because we have a smaller period. I'm going to have to start looking at this bat soon. Right, let's look at this bat. He's a beauty, or she's a beauty. Nope. Yeah, let's move you above the pencil layer. Okay. Now, what I'm probably gonna do, just for my own fun, is separate the bat into a different layer too. So this is cute. His eyes are on different sides of his head. So he's cute. And I like the fangs. I'm not gonna do him exact again too. This is just gonna be a hint. Um, really, I just need to show that this bat is going daddy. See how I feel about this bat. Gotta put a little bow on it, which is just sort of silly. But not so much looking to gender the bat here and more. Show that it's a baby bat. how you like this bat she's gonna look a little scary but this is how bats do look not all of them a lot of bats do kind of look like this they definitely have teeth like this and one thing I love about it is that they have these little fingers they're they're their wings are actually their flanges and stuff spread out. I just love that about them. So you can kind of angle their... Their wings are essentially their the skin stretched between the flanges of their fingers. I just think that's so cool. Like how this one structure this one skeletal structure adapted, mammalian skeletal structure adapted in so many different ways to accomplish this. I mean, can, can you believe we're that closely related to bats? That seems shocking. I don't know. So Maya, if this is too scary, and you got another drone coming up next month. But it's kind of spooky. This could be a Halloween drawing, huh? Now, I can draw through the spider, but I want to figure out the points where it cuts across. I would like to just 
do that, but that might be too. I think if I hit at that, that's good. And then I have to show the rest with where these are pointed. And then I just need to connect that. That'll come out later because this. I put this on a different layer, so that's going to go away. So this needs to be closed. Um, the lines need to be closed for, in order for me to do the coloring I want to do with it later. So let's draw the... Am I on the right layer? Yes, I should technically rename the layer that. So I can screw this up. All right. I just want to get the... Cover going in here. The bedspread. I guess I say this is why the complex drawings can take more time. Um, it is because. Oh, Claudio has joined the chat. Thank you. Yes, the bows is key. Claudio is related to Maya. Let's leave it at that. So, you know what, I can pop that on another layer too, so let's leave that there. If Claudia likes it, then we're on a good path. We're on a good path. So I don't want to scare Maya, but I also want her to, you know, this is in fact what a bat looks like. At some point or another when you're growing up, your parent has to take you to the side and sit you down and have to talk and explain to you that bats are kind of ugly and weird looking, and that's okay. They're all part of our ecosystem, and they provide a wonderful service. Their guano helps run several ecosystems in the world. Drawing that so small, but I am. I'm gonna hint at some folds here. That's the key is you gotta hint at this stuff. But again, too many lines, it's not good, it just becomes a mess. Remember, I can draw through the spider because it's on another layer. Let's turn off the spider. So, see here, we need to connect this. Because we're going to color that later and we want it there. That's the pillow. So this probably goes through the book, so I'm just going to do that. So that's all hidden by the book, other than the pillow. So, or the book and the spider, I should say. It might not be, though, if we think about this right. Okay, it's going to be running back here. Let's say it goes here. And that way we can uh, hint that there's legs. It's going to look fine. That's fine, that's fine. That'll all come on the wash later. Guarantee it. I guarantee it. Okay, everything was connected there. We'll head back to our main layer here. And, uh... It's not our main layer, I, I misspoke. The bat is just as important as the spider, as the spider, if not more important. Let me just, um, because I know it's bugging you guys, let's go ahead and just fill in the spider so you realize. Although that may not be the color that they want, right? But we could use the color from here. All right, let's see. Let's see this dude. I'm gonna 
here, dude. Yeah, it is kind of a cool, almost purple color to it. Right. I'm definitely gendering the spider. Spider's a dude. That's just that's just how I'm seeing this. Let's just color that in just so we can kind of see it. Book Runaway Bunny, as I remember, actually did that kind of color, so I should do that. And the pages are white. Alright, so now we feel like, you know, you should see his other legs. We're also missing a spider leg. You hate to miss a spider leg. There's very few things anatomically that people are going to call you on, but everybody kind of knows that spiders have eight legs. That's like a known thing. People are, um, they're on top of that one. Let's have it there. I just want to show one of them. It's almost kind of distracting because it's right by the face. It could theoretically be here. I don't know. Uh. That. Better, if they were, better, if they were, better if they were over here. Closer to the other leg. It covers up more of the bed. See, it just starts to be a mess over here. This is why hard illustrations are hard. I feel like we need to follow through with the last one, so that's why I want to put it over there then. So you can get eyes on every single. You get that. You get spider leg counters. That's what you get. You know, when you're an illustrator, you get you, you realize that there are a lot of spider leg counters out there. And, uh, you know, they're not wrong. Look. Look. You gotta have the appropriate number of legs on your spiders. Otherwise, what have you been doing out here? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Now the bat, you know, is, um, I think it's kind of a nice, she, kind of a nice color too. Oh, yeah, this nice tan color. I like that. We don't even have the thing up for the bat, but let's do it. So when you make her layer or reference layer, what you're doing is you are allowing for that layer. Well, we can go back and fiddle with the colors more later. Um, you're allowing the lines from that layer to serve as the boundaries for colors you might do on another layer. Super helpful. Super helpful. Right. Nope. I did the wrong brush. I did the wrong brush. And the price. Alright. Let's do a time check. 10.30. Alright. We can go. We're going to move here. We're going to get through the bedspread and the pillow. All right, we're gonna go with, that green seems weird. I mean, we can go pink. Right, let's look at this bright pink. Actually, it looks kind of nice. Since we're, so we, we got a bow on our head anyway. We're, uh, we're kind of going for it here. And then we're the light pink for her sheet. 
could also be blue. No, no we're missing something here. Okay. Spider, you go away for a sec. Oh no. We're just covering that up. Oh, I see. This is incorrect. Okay, so the line did not close the line in the book here. So when I filled in here, I had a. Uh, I colored it white and it was covering up everything. Which is okay here. Let's just do that like this. Okay there. Not okay there. Alright. Let's fill that in. And then her pillow. Make it kind of a wood grain here. The bed. Flip some parts. There's a hint of a bed back there. We're feeling okay about that. And yes, our all important bow. We will have to find a color for the bow. Um, Claudio, if you have a particular color for the bow in mind, you can pipe up. Leave it for now. I'm gonna draw the rest of these. See all these little things to draw. Can I draw boobs? Come on. Can I can go quick but good? Quick but great. I really like drawing these rounded spines on books. Apparently, even though this Really, again, for a kid's book, doesn't make a ton of sense. But maybe we'll make that like a Winnie the Pooh type book. What else? My kids don't honestly ask for snacks and stuff at bedtime, but... Hmm. So, I'm thinking you could put a snack down there. It's like her little bat stuffy. I guess it would be a dolly. Because if it's the same species as you, as you, isn't it a dolly at that point? It's her little bat dolly with the head ripped off. We'll put some fuzz, fuzz coming out of it. good. We have our glass of milk. I'm gonna put a glass. My girls would only have a sippy cup. It's gonna be too confusing to draw a sippy cup right here. I think. And we will make that a color. I also think I really like that little head. Oops, and I did it on the wrong layer. I really like that little head, but I think it needs to be a little more visually separated from the body. And it becomes a nice, little more of an Easter egg. It's like the bat direct that's a stupid thing to say it's literally one of the five main things in the drawing right, and I think the clock is good whoops 
Whoa, whoa. You saw the rest of my procreate. Switch back over here for a little just to see some stuff. I've been switching all the time because I've been trying to focus on the drawing. Okay, Claudia says the bow pink. Fair enough. See? Join the chat. Change the drawing. At Claudia's. Also a patron. So, it's very involved in the drawings. Oh, you know, I never really stopped. Let me stop this point to point out I'm working on a Sketchboard Pro. Uh, I use this, my iPad sits right into this. See, like that. Ooh, nice. Makes it um, like, a, like an amazing drawing desk that you can take anywhere with you. Uh, I do have an offer if you're interested in getting a Sketchboard Pro for yourself. Um, you can go right over to sketchboardpro.com and get one of these. They have them in... Uh, uh, black and the white one's really cool. Uh, they have those now. And if you use Rooney Comics when you check out, you get 10% off. Uh, yeah, this white one is so cool. Um, but yeah, just go into checkout, uh, get over to the cart. Yeah, that's great. Um, and then when you when you go to actually check out, right here in the old uh, uh, gift code, you can put in Rooney Comics and. Uh, get 10% off just like that I can't recommend I can't recommend this product enough it's it's literally changed it's made me do digital art um, having having this uh, having the sketchbook pro it's you're able to take it anywhere with you it turns your iPad essentially into a much more workable tablet because you'd really want a larger screen but to be honest one of the main reasons you'd want a larger screen is to be able to get your hands uh, all around all around the art and with this uh, you don't need it because you, you have that. So head over to Sketchboard Pro, um, check them out. Again, the the white one is really cool, but uh, this black one's great too. It, it's fit exactly to whatever iPad you have. So this works for any iPad. And in fact, if later you change and get a different size iPad, you can actually just change out this middle part and drop in your new, um, your new iPad. I've gotten this for other artist friends. I, I the only reason I reached out to ask about this discount code is because I use this and really love um, this thing. So head to sketchboardpro.com, pick up one for yourself, and uh, you can get 10% off if you use the code Rooney Comics. That's sketchboardpro.com. I think you can also go to sketchboardpro.com slash Rooney Comics, but either way, um, head on over there. As I said, it's also better for your ergonomics and stuff like that. It helps you uh, sit better. I like to take it around and um, you can actually then use it in your lap and, and, and draw on the couch and stuff like that. It makes that a lot more doable. Um, but head over there, code Rooney Comics to get 10% off over Sketchboard Pro. I was supposed to talk about that before he started coloring. That's a little clock. And I think we're just gonna wanna indicate that it's late. So, I want to make it really late. Because I know Maya. I think Maya. I think it's like 2 in the morning. That's what I think. And I'm gonna, so, I'm going to have the long hand go up here. But that at least indicates that. We're not going to draw all the numbers because it'll again. Too much stuff. You got to keep it. Iconographic. Um, I'm feeling good about the composition here. The only thing you could add is something in this area, but I think it's okay. So let's get back to the colors. Her lamp is going to be a more traditional bat gray. And probably that's because I just don't want to distract. That is too gray. And too dark, rather. That's good. Boy, yes. Uh, this other book. Oh, we gotta do the water. That's that. The little stuffy 
it would be a similar color to her. But, um... And the stuff inside is white. I don't have to do that. I keep forgetting that this color drop feature is a thing. Let's take away the pencil. At this point. Um, our background color. It's late. So I'm thinking something like this would be nice if we really darken it. This is possible. Well, let's come back to that. Let's leave it like that and then we'll come back to that. If we put the background color in, we can immediately see the things that we've not colored. Uh, I was gonna make the book have a green cover, but guess what? Books don't have green covers unless they're about money. So, it's not gonna be that. It'll be a yellow cover. That's... Right. Then we gotta get into actually just coloring with our brush. That's this is the real this is the grunt work. You know? This is what you gotta This is what I need a you know a vast team of assistants to be doing is coloring the these very small things. But you know this is what you get with a complex drawing. You get a lot of work here. A lot of detail work. This would blow up nice if you wanted to print this out. So patrons get these digital files and they can do whatever they like. Whatever they like with it. We're going to start offering our prints too. Um, so if, if they like, they can turn these into a nice print and I'll send that over to them. But for now they get the files. This guy. A lot of spider ones. A lot of, a lot of joints and things involved here. See, that's what I'm saying about the hair. I think we indicated the hair enough uh, with, with, you know, with this some. I think that's fine. I don't, I don't think we need to get into showing a bunch of individual hairs. It's just distracting. I do want to revisit the color of the spider's mandibles. Because they seem to be kind of a cool color. That's not right. They seem to be kind of a cool color. And I don't want to miss that. So we'll get to that. That might add a nice little pop there. Oh, I also forgot two of his eyes. So we'll definitely have to get to that. So a little extra dude there. I'm going to take that out. Okay. Let me check what's going on. Pink. Uh, this is a good point. Both of these animals are nocturnal, Claudio points out. So the bedtime, it being two, is not late. It's actually early. So we'll have to turn that around. You know what we're gonna do? Only you on the live stream know that we did this, we'll, uh, just do that. Well, it could be two in the afternoon. That's the thing. There's no real way to, to know this with the 12 hour time. Oh, wait, what? Selected it weird. So it could be two in the afternoon. That's the point. But, should we make it instead six? How would you make it knowing that it's bedtime? Maybe I should leave it at two. You've thrown me off here, Claudio. But if it's, if everything's switched, can you be waking up? at around six or seven, 
you'd be going to bed. I mean, if you went to bed late, it would be... It would be six or seven in the morning, right? Ten. Maybe ten's good. Okay, I think ten is good. So this is actually good. You know? Because either they're trying to go to bed and they've stayed up so late that they went all the way around the clock, or... Yeah, that's good. Now this white is a nice color. Why did it? That's not white. That's um. That's interesting. I like it. Or is that just? That may be something else going on. I like it. Hey, come on. Get to bed. Helen, the bat clock. And then, right, so this, it should be that the sun is almost rising. Maybe that's the way to go. Yeah. That's good. We're not going to be anatomically perfect here. We're going to get the basics of their, uh, of their lifestyle down. Are spiders nocturnal, though? I wonder how the spider ended up raising a bat. Now, it is true that some bats could be... Some spiders could be that big, and some bats could be small enough that this kind of comparison could work. Particular spider I picked, a particular bat I picked? I don't think it's gonna... I don't think this makes sense. But we'll suspend our disbelief for the purposes of this drawing. All right, so we're gonna get in our basic colors in. I guess this is what you would call. I, I, I'm. I will admit that I'm fairly new to coloring because, in the physical art world, coloring was never my thing. And similarly, I found it tedious and very difficult to get any effect that I wanted. But a couple things in digital, it's so much easier to do a lot of uh, the things you might want to do. And also, it's kind of like table stakes. Like, you have to do digital. There's no choice. You don't get to pick. You don't get to pick whether you want to do color in digital. It's like, that's just, that's just how it is. So, where are we at? Where are we at? We're gonna have to definitely go over an hour here, but it's okay. Right. Oh, what's going on? Oh, black. Don't usually do like white eyeballs with eyes in them, but it's just decided for both these guys to do it. I've started to settle on just doing, whoops. Uh, just the eye. Just one circle for an eye, not a circle with a dot in it. All right, guess what? She's gonna be so fancy. Maya. Maya, the bat is going to match. She's wearing a matching bow to bat. This is like a, she is a batty bat, but she is pretty fashion forward. So I use this brush that makes this rough ink edge and it's great. But it does mean that I kind of have to check up here on the filling. And yeah, if you're an artist, there's a quicker way to do this. Boy, would I love to hear from you. But I don't believe there is. I believe this is part of what, part of what you got to do here to get the uh, effect that you want. And 
and we'll, we'll check them. Remember, don't worry. We'll check in their colors. We'll go see if different parts of them need different colors. One of the difficulties of drawing mark, uh, animals in this sort of cartoony way is it's hard to stay, but so true to their markings. I mean, you know, do your best, but let's make this bow matching while we're here. Over there. I mean, come on. There's a matching bow. She's cute. That's a cute bow. Couple of the teeth, I, really, and 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 again in this photo of the bat, they're going to show you. You're going to see the bat's teeth pretty clearly on um, the bottom row too. But I'm just not going to do that. So she just gets darker around the ears, and then the wings are kind of like this lighter gray color. So we could do that. So make that like stand out a little. Let me give us another color to look at. So what most artists will tell you, apparently, is that when they're doing these live streamings, they find it difficult to talk while they're doing the sketching, the penciling, the initial phase where you're kind of planning out the image. For whatever end board, and maybe not all orders, but I, I have heard that, let's just say. But for me, because that is the easier part for me, relatively, I don't mind talking during that. But the coloring is hard for me this dude and so I find it hard to keep talking when I'm coloring because my brain is temporarily shutting up so I want the initial thing done before I get that texture. This will also offset the mouth, so that's good. So now I'm, I'm happy we did it, even just for that reason. Yeah, and the eye. Okay, yeah. The whole face is going to stand out better. Yeah, so we move the background to a lighter color. And Claudio is pleased with that, yep. Claudio, having talked to him over the years, is himself nocturnal at times. So he knows a lot about what these creatures are going through. I, uh, I am, uh, I've become increasingly a morning person as I've become an old, old man. I don't know if any of you guys can relate on that. I rarely use this, but let's... Oh, that's interesting. We'll blend these two. That's interesting. shadows. Boy, that's a lot of coloring. That's a lot of coloring. But you don't have to be right. We're not doing it right. Let's just not do it at all. You know what I'm saying? It's fine. 
Okay, let's go back to our dear friend the spider. Yeah, this is green. That's good. Because we don't have anything in there yet, so. Make his mandibles green. And we will use that for this. Well, as I said, I have not and never have claimed to be a colorist, but you kinda gotta do what you gotta do here in this digital realm, and I think I think, I think this spider looks good. And I think once we get our shadows in, this is bugging me, this tiny little, can you see this little spot? I don't know where that spot. There's lots of other spots here too. Oh boy. Matchy matchy. Okay. I think Hachi Machi is the catchphrase from the TV show The Critic? Or is that just its things? Is Hachi Machi from something else? Okay. I like it. It's got a little green mustache. Now he actually had a bright blue too. Well, let me just get the color for you guys. Cool. Oh, that's cool. Oops. That. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, like I said, the coloring is the part where it is hard for me to talk because it is where my brain is working the hardest. I am not naturally, or I just don't have the years of training um, on this coloring stuff. He looks okay. We're gonna need to lighten him up some. I think we gotta move on to shadows. We are at 10.59. We're gonna have to go at least another 15 minutes because we gotta add in the shadows here. Um, and that's that. The runaway baddie and uh, something with spider. Something with webs, spiders. Webby the Pooh. I wanted it to be Winnie the Pooh, so. Winnie the Pooh. Again, just let stupid wordplay into your heart. Let it warm you. Let it envelop you. It's, um, it's what will keep you going through the tough times, is really stupid jokes that involve just words that sound like other words. I think there should be a whole channel on uh, on TV that's just words that sound like other words. And, oh I know, we'll do it like this. Let's say we don't, I can't have the title in the back of the book. Webby. The, am I missing something with Pooh? Webby the Pooh, Webby the Pooh. And what we'll do is, it'll be a little, Spider with a red shirt. The iconic red shirt, which apparently was largely invented by Disney. 
I guess the shirt wasn't really colored in the print editions of Winnie the Pooh. Man, I fell for a really bad clickbait article recently. And um, it literally, it's not like it was a scam or something. It's just the title sold me on this idea that it was A.A. Milne's birthday, I think, the author of Winnie the Pooh. It said A.A. Milne had this beautiful theory about happiness. You know, reveal it in this article or whatever. So I was like, oh great, A.A. Milne, and it's his birthday. I'm so excited to hear about this. And, you know, the article. And it's just one of his poems from one of the, the books that he wrote. And, it, you know, it was a very short poem about happiness. It's a nice poem. Nothing wrong with it. But I thought it was going to be this, like, 500 words about about A. Milne and uh, the, you know, something transcendental that he revealed to us all. It was not. Whoops. Alright. Lights coming from here. Oops. See, I'm going to do this, but that's definitely going to be dark, too. So I don't, know why, I don't know why I'm being so precious with it. I think I'm going to make... Because... Um, that's okay. Yeah, it's not bad. Give it a little segment here. That's all his dad is tired. Spider dead. Spider dead. I like this because his mandibles are kind of like a mustache. Seems like a very dad thing to have. Mustache. Deciding that the joints are gonna be like shiny, like there's never gonna be a full shadow at the joint. Why? I don't know. Because it accentuates them. Yeah, he looks a lot better now. That helped him a lot. It did, it did. I kind of want to do something a little broad like that. Mm, that might be too dark. It's not dark at all in here. But uh, believe me, it is. brightness here so I see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It could be darker and then I could back that up a little bit. Alright. You've sold me, iPad. I believe you now. Workbook, so there should be a little top there. It's good. It's fine. It's all right. It's okay. There's something to live for. It's from American movie. Movie yeah, I liked to watch. About Mark Borchard. 
inspiring American figure. The guy who's tried to make a movie in the early 2000s. Well, he was trying to make a movie in the late the mid 90s, but the movie came out in the early 2000s. And we're gonna, we're gonna have to get the shadows in here too. The bat also. We're gonna do the bat. Okay. See, guys, you think creating is easy, but it is not. It actually is. But just like that. So I'm leaving it and doing another one. Let's make this one. Now, I threatened earlier that the, the shadowing on the things was really going to sell it. So I guess it better. Is it because they're like little eyeballs? You almost want to shade them, see? Which is. Kind of weird. shading of the skin flaps and the thing kind of comes together. It's of a piece. And then we should do a similar thing that we did with the spider. to make it drop into the background more. I'm telling you what I think. I don't know. If you're a professional colorist, please, tell me what I'm doing wrong. What are we doing wrong here? Okay. All right. We're going to do the same thing for the bat. And... Add some something here. Because I don't think it should be as pronounced. It should be more like that. And then I'll just do another layer for the. Because I have to do the shading for the. Um, the sheet.
Especially this. over there. Like this is a shadow from the bat. I see cool areas that are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Square thing is helpful because it gives us an easy shading. I think it's what's interesting about the coloring for me is that it's kind of like the iconicity of the of the drawing itself. Um, the coloring can't be can't have too much gradient. It has to be a flat coloring it helps the image because this is a cartoon. It's a it's not a you know. A super realistic drawing so if the coloring starts to feel super realistic it just feels wonky you know so you just got a hint at stuff this is looking good though i'm feeling i hope maya likes it but i'm feeling good about this we're still have to do highlights and uh, then we'll be good. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do the highlights. Oh. Yeah, you know, we gotta do it. We gotta do it. So, when I do this, I often like to go over like this and sort of add in these little bits of ink blotch. Along with the fabric of the lines, I think it just gives the fabric folds just a little more texture. Oops. And I like it. So that the fabric has one more layer of differentiation in color than the other things. Alright. Now this Over here, okay. Hello, that's not what I want to do. All right. Yeah, I think there's just like a few highlights here. as always. Yeah, that's good for Miss Bat. Okay, it's good from the spot. Yeah, uh, Claudia was just commenting on the music. This is a, uh, this is jazz from the 1920s and 10s that has come into the public domain. So that's what that music is. Although I still got a copyright notice from YouTube about it, but it was one of these chill copyright notices. They were like, "We notice you were playing this music. We identified it." We're not going to do anything about it. But we just want you to know that we know. It's like, well, what, what does that mean? Because it says, oh, Maeve. It affects your ability to monetize this later. But I don't really understand why. Because it's it's public domain. I don't know how to look into it more. I have to look into it more. Well, you know, my 
like this. Music taken away. I don't know. Don't blame me. I have a very long blank this. This copyright. Mickey Mouse is supposed to be going into the book and doing it very soon. Not Mickey, not all of Mickey Mouse, but literally the first uh, Mickey Mouse cartoon, Steamboat Willie. Should pass into the public domain soon, but may not. So when I turn, this is, what I'm doing, see if I draw this straight, it's a very sharp line. If I turn it on its side, I can get this way, guy. And this is uh, that's an Apple Pencil deal. And I have it similar ways on on other styli, styluses. But uh, that's a that's a game changing feature. Oh, you know, if there's water inside the cup. That would. Uh, Actually, have its own. Okay, now this one, I'll turn really low. I'm gonna try. Okay, bigger. Stabs it. Actually, maybe this is fine, and then I'll just, uh... Wash down this thing. Okay. I like that better for the texture. Okay. So some shadow things I noticed... ...were... ...this is not shadowed on here, it should be. And I need it to be that. This needs additional shadowing. What is this? Uh, oops. Very strange. Shadow here, so I'll put shadows in the highlights. And then there's more shadows, so I can get the shadows also in the highlights. Should be darker. Alright. I think that's looking good. All we need, literally, all we need. Uh, I'll find that link for the music for you. Claudia, I'll get it over to you, but it's, uh, it's nice. Claudia, if you're still listening, if anyone wants to shoot me in the chat or the comments, can you, with the music, can you hear me okay? I'll explain why after you tell me whether you can. All right, we need another layer for the general shadow. Okay. 
since it like the shadow into the world itself. Oops. So it helps place the lamp a little if I do it right. It just it doesn't have to be perfect. And what I mean by that, Maya, is not that the drawing doesn't have to be perfect. The drawing does have to be perfect for you. But the placement of the lines doesn't have to be perfect in order to make the drawing perfect. That makes sense. That's pretty good. Was were his eyes a different color? The with my spider. I can't find my spider. Did I do, uh, Oh, they're a little green. That's pretty. Yeah, let's use that. I don't want to put it here, so I'm actually going to put it on top of the highlights. Still seeing so much. It's okay. This is, oh yeah, I forgot to do this. Dag have it. I guess I have 15 minutes. Man, that was a what was it? It's been 23 minutes. This is a long stream. My wife told me to make the streams shorter. People request this illustration. I can't do this any quicker. And in some respect. If I did it quicker, wouldn't Maya be like, you said this was a complex illustration, so how come it took you just as much time as a regular illustration? What's up with that? And she'd be right. I would not have a leg to stand on. just what I want. And I'm psyched about this composition now. Very much so. It has come together. Like I knew it would. I never had a doubt. Um, that's not true, but I just always or something out. It's always away. Nice. 
Oh, there's not one other thing that makes everything look nice, too. Which we should do. And then we'll end. Let's pour our. main characters here. We'll do another pass at the ink lines. So that they pop more than everything else. And it gives us an opportunity to cover up any little weird things that we see. I think getting these illustrations and getting your own live stream of the drawing is pretty cool. It said I only really have a limited number of spots of these, and do you know why? Because there are only so many days in the year. I can only really afford to do this once a week. Gonna do the math there. There's only but so many people can become a custom illustration member. We do the spots right now. Check back every month to see if we still have them. Right now we do. I think the bat's really gonna pop up this time. Yeah. Yeah, this is it just adds, like, oh, here's some ink, you know, I should have put on the paper. Here's some coloring. Missteps I can paper over. Here's some lines that were wiggly and I can smooth out. Feels sometimes like cheating showing you guys this stuff. Huh, then you just draw the line over that. It's easy. It's a fix. But like anything, it's just something you get used to doing. If you do it a lot, you learn the tricks. There's tricks. And if you're skilled at something and you're not using the tricks that are available to you to improve, you're doing it wrong. If you're a developer, for example, I know Claudio is. If you're not learning all the shortcut keys you can to make your workflow quicker, what are you doing? So some of these tricks I learned. I didn't do it separate. Last time I did it separate, I showed you the difference between with or without those additional um, lines on there uh, and uh, it makes a huge difference I'm gonna end here but I'm gonna close on this Claudio just asks why does my sound sound so good and I'll tell you something can't pull it out I have a really great mic that I use for a podcast I do but it's huge and it's it, I had to be very close to it for it to sound good so it wouldn't work in this situation I tried that. I tried my uh, webcam mic. I tried uh, any number of things. And if the sound sounds okay, let me tell you what the sound is. It is my iPhone. It's my iPhone. The microphone for my iPhone was giving the best sound of, of everything. 
So that's how the sound to all these live streams are recorded. The sound goes through my iPhone, and for some reason that just, that the speakerphone, or you know, whatever, the microphone on that, picks it up perfectly. I didn't sign this. Maya, I'm signing it right now. That's not good. I'm signing it right now. A patient spider and a batty bat. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been amazing. Check out the Patreon. Get an illustration just like this for yourself. If you join at the $10 level or higher, patreon.com slash Porter Mason. And go to rudycomics.com to check out all the other comics. And of course, get a Sketchboard Pro. I moved the iPhone so you can't see it. A Sketchboard Pro. Um, go to sketchboardpro.com and use offer code Rooney Comics to get 10% off. We'll see you guys next Thursday at 10 for another live stream of another Patreon illustration. Thank you guys again. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.